Alright, welcome to the let's play of Penumbra Overture. Alright, and um, it looks like it's actually kept my settings from the demo playthrough. For my part in this allegory, I'm not going to make the same mistakes my father made. Howard vanished from my mother's life before I was even in it, so when he sent me a letter a few days after Mum's funeral, it was the first I'd ever heard from him. Pity he was dead. Writing from beyond the grave must be a genetic habit in my bloodline. His letter contained a key, instructions, pleas for forgiveness. I figured the dead don't have much use for absolution, so I turned to his prophetic passing which he inexplicably expected to come any day. Clearly averse to explanations, my father preferred to leave directions to a bank on Mayfair I'd never even heard of. In that bank was a safety deposit box in his name, and myself as executor. Of course, I went as he knew I would. I discovered that despite the evidence, he'd been legally declared dead almost 30 years ago and said the old book and collection of notes I found had, in the eyes of the law, been mine all this time. My father's instructions were to burn the documents, raise no further questions. But that was his error. No man's immune to the shameful trappings of curiosity, and my humanity got the better of me. The university I taught at was world-renowned for two things, physics and linguistics. I represented the first, and the man who stood for the second was stumped by my recent acquisition. The book was indecipherable. The notes, however, showed a location somewhere in uninhabited northern Greenland. It took me almost a year to book the last flight I'd ever take. As I watched civilization disappear along with Heathrow, I realised my father had disappeared three decades ago, almost to the day, and I considered in turn what it was that I was leaving behind. We landed on a strip of ice a few feet wide, and within minutes I was pulling away on a chartered boat, beginning the 12 hour journey that would lead me into my past. Alright so... I've been looking forward to playing this game a lot. Um, I'm playing it with headphones in, so that I've got the full experience. And I mean, really the first thing that attracted me to this game was this. The pure interactivity of it. Which is just, I mean, I remember seeing a comment. Someone saying that, you know, Half-Life 2 had the same sort of thing. That's interesting. I don't know whether that's good physics or a glitch, but it's pretty cool. 
I mean that was harder to open because of the chair. So really my favourite part about this game is the interactivity. Dear aesthetic, just cutting up before Oh, sweet letter. I wonder if that's just sort of randomly in the game or whether it's actually gonna come up at any point. No, oh, well, when I say randomly, I mean it's not of any particular relevance, but I think it's always good to add some sort of realism to it. Pretty decent idea. A more indecisive idea would be better, but oh well. Did I get my flashlight? Yes, I did. It's the glow stick I've got to get. Extra batteries. That's always nice. I really doubt that the place I'm going is going to be very loving and kind, but nonetheless I'm going to look forward to it. God, you can barely see anything. I remember in the demo you had um, slight sort of use to be able to see what you were doing, but they've obviously made the blizzard a lot more ferocious in this. This is a graphical glitch, I think, actually. I mean, you should be able to see the going down into it. Well, let's hope that's the only one of them. It's hell. That is some nice music right there. I can actually barely hear my own voice. Because I've got the headphones turned right up. So it's quite strange, it almost feels like I'm not talking. Alright. I find always best in games like this to search everything you can. Also, I'm very, um, I'm a very conservative, mm, I don't know if that's the right word, um, player. Basically, I'll do my best not to waste anything and I'll, I'll only use stuff really when I feel 
I desperately need to. Now there's empty boxes of ammunition around. Quite clearly something's gone wrong. does not sound like something friendly. So yeah, these guys, frictional games, are renowned for being able to make creepy atmospheric situations.